Hello everyone. The topic for today is automatic gain control in radio receivers. In this lecture, we shall discuss the concept of automatic gain control or AGC, the different types of AGC and the working of delayed AGC circuit. Automatic gain control is a mechanism wherein the overall gain of the radio receiver is automatically varied according to the changing strength of the received signal. I shall try to explain the need for such a circuit. All of us might have tried to tune to various stations using a radio receiver. There are cases where the signal strength varies from station to station. This is where the AGC mechanism comes into picture. Irrespective of the channel that we, we tune to, the AGC mechanism sees to it that the receiver output is maintained at a constant level. There are basically two types of AGC circuits, simple AGC and the delayed AGC. The figure here shows the characteristic of AGC circuits. Now you find that on the, on the x-axis we have the incoming signal strength and the y-axis you have the receiver output voltage. So the characteristic of a simple AGC circuit, a delayed AGC and an ideal AGC has been shown over here. So now this dotted line, it shows the case of no AGC at all. That is a receiver circuit which does not have an AGC mechanism in it. Now here you can see that how does this particular circuit work or what is the, how does this perform. Now irrespective of the signal strength, you find that there is no control in this particular receiver. When the signal strength is low, you find that the receiver is giving you low output. When the signal strength increases, again you find that the receiver strength, receiver is giving a signal of a higher strength. So you can find that some channels where you have the signal strength is high, you will hear it is very, you will hear it very loudly. At other channels, you find that the signal strength is very weak or you hear it very feebly. So that's the case for no AGC. Now, when you come to this to the type of simple AGC circuit, what is done in this, the mechanism that is followed here is, according to the strength of the incoming signal, there is a control that we are doing to the output signal of the receiver. So here, irrespective of the strength of the signal, there is some control being applied to the entire signals. That is, if it's a signal of a low strength, they're applying a small, they, are, they actually control the gain of the amplifiers that are used in this particular receiver. An automatic gain control circuit tries to control the output or tries to maintain a constant level output by controlling the gain of the IF and the RF amplifiers present in the receiver circuit. So what is done in a simple AGC, AGC is that according to the strength of the input incoming signal, you find that there is a control or the gain of the amplifiers are being controlled proportional to the strength of the signal. So your weaker signal is also, in a, for the case of weaker signal also, there is a control imposed. For the stronger signal also, you find that there is a control or control in the gain of the amplifiers used in the receiver. Now, if you consider the case of an ideal AGC, what we want is that this is not what we what we want. In simple AGC, even the low strength signals or the weak signals are being again attenuated, or the strength is being reduced. Stronger signals are also the strength of stronger, stronger signals are also reduced. So, what we want is the ideal AGC. What we want is. For the weaker signals, weak signals or signals of lower strength, we do not want to apply any AGC control mechanism onto that. So you find that, so up to a particular level, you find up to this particular level, the incoming signal strength coming up to this level, we will not apply any control over the gain of these amplifiers. All the amplifiers, the IF and the RF, RF amplifiers will be operating in the maximum gain and then we will be giving the output in that manner. Beyond a particular signal strength, we do not want all these amplifiers to operate with maximum gain because it, is actually, it will actually affect the output of the receiver. So what we do is beyond a particular value which we can manually set, you'd, what, we, what, we can, what we see is that we try to maintain the output. So beyond a particular signal strength, even if the signal strength is very large for certain station, we do not let the receiver output voltage go beyond a particular limit. So this is the concept of an ideal AGC. That is up to a particular level you do not you do not want to do any control to the gain but beyond a particular level you see that you will maintain the output at a constant level 
this is an ideal agc now the circuit what is employed in receivers are delayed agc circuits so this is more or less near or closer to the ideal agc characteristic now in delayed agc this is what we do we again have a control we set a threshold of a particular value and so what we find is that up to that particular threshold there is no voltage and no control given to there is no means by which we try to control the gain of the amplifiers the amplifiers they operate in with full gain or maximum amplification and beyond a particular level we try to impose certain constraint by giving a dc bias voltage to reduce the gain of the amplifiers so that the output voltage of the receiver remains constant irrespective of the channel to which we tune to so that is a characteristic of agc circuit no agc means that there is no control this is not desirable we find that different stations when you tune to different stations you'll be listening to these stations with different strength that is you'll be hearing certain stations are very strong signals for certain stations we receive very weak signals so this is not desirable a good receiver is one which has got an automatic gain control mechanism in it now simple agc has got the limitation that even if the signal that is this control is being imposed even to weak signals so this is not again desirable because the signals which are already weak will again be attenuated because of the effect of this simple agc and what is ideal or what we want is desirable is that of a delayed agc circuit so we'll be looking into the circuit of a delayed agc now this is the block diagram of a delayed agc circuit now you find that in any radio receiver you have one or two stages of frequency translation before we bring the signals to intermediate frequency now here what is shown is the last level or the last block of if amplifier just before detection so you have your signals in the intermediate frequency range and the signals amplified just ready for detection now this detector what we have shown here is the detector that we had discussed in the previous class now this section what we have added over here in the receiver this is the agc mechanism that is being included now here this diode is called as the agc diode and now here what you can see here this is actually the delayed the concept what we said is delayed agc now this diode here you have the modulated signal coming over here and then it goes to detector for demodulation and then goes to the next stage audio stage so over here what we do over here is you have a coupling capacitor which is taking your signal over here and this diode begins to conduct now here on the cathode side we have set a voltage at the cathode side a positive voltage at the cathode side so this diode begins to conduct only when the voltage of the anode becomes greater than that of the cathode so till then this diode is not conducting or you can say that our agc circuit or this particular portion is not functioning so this is just the concept of delayed agc the agc circuit will not do any attenuation or it will not produce any dc bias it will not provide any dc bias to the if or R, the if or the rf amplifiers of the receiver until the signal strength reaches a particular level so only for signals of a strength beyond a particular level we try to apply some limiting limitation so that the output of the receiver is maintained as a constant so here we will set that this can be adjusted manually so you according to the input signal that is coming over here if you're receiving a signal a strength from a station uh, which is this uh, you're receiving a station with the low signal strength you find that this particular section will not be working I mean you find that you receive a signal of a higher strength very large strength you don't want all the amplifiers in the receiver to be working in maximum gain so that is where this particular section will come into play so you find that this diode in that case will begin to conduct or you find that you will have here there's a low pass filter which will try to remove all this audio frequency components and all the higher frequency components and you will only have the strength of the signal or the dc a dc voltage coming at the output over here so this dc voltage is what we apply to the transistors of the amplifiers in the if the if and rf amplifiers that we are using in the receivers and that is the way how we try to limit the gain for signals of higher strength now this is a circuit of delayed AGC 
Now this is exactly the same as what we have seen in the block diagram, just revisiting the block diagram where we had the detector over here, we are replacing it with the practical die detector and this amplifier, the last stage we are showing it by just a transistor at the output stage. So this is what we see over here, you have this, this is the last IF amplifier, the output transistor has been shown over here, this is a practical diode detector, what we have seen in the last class, the practical diode detector and this is our HEC circuit, what we have just discussed right now. So the explanation now there are two ways in which you can do this connection there is one way is we can connect the you can note notice here that there are two diodes this is the diode of the detector and this is our AGC diode which we introduced just previously so here this circuit can be connected these two circuits can either be connected to the secondary over here secondary winding of this transformer output transformer or you can connect one circuit to the secondary the other circuit to the primary so this particular circuit what is shown here it is connecting the detector the die detector section or the demodulator section to the primary coil of the, of the output transformer and the agc circuit is being connected to the the, this is the sec sorry the secondary coil and HEC circuit is being connected to the primary coil. So here again the functions it's all the same. Here this particular part is responsible for giving you a demodulated output. So you get the audio frequency output over here across R4 and then it is being amplified and then you get the audio output. Now here depending on the strength of the signal that you receive this AGC detector or AGC diode will de decide whether the AGC circuit should be active or not. So up to a particular level of voltage which is set by this particular manual adjustment control this AGC bias will not be applied and beyond that particular voltage which we, have, which we have set if the input signal strength goes beyond a particular voltage we find that a DC voltage corresponding to the signal strength will be generated and this DC voltage will be given to the DC bias will be given to the inputs of the IF and RF amplifiers so as to control the gain of this amplifier. So in this way, an AGC circuit ceased with that, irrespective of the channel that we tune to, the output of the receiver remains almost constant. Thank you.